I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Oscar Webbis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Eddie Hearn joins me. Coogan standing out. Do you do that? Is this like apprentice? This is like a probation know, once it's again. Quite, like, it's quite intimidating, isn't it? He's literally on your shoulder, like listening. Like he's some kind of interviewing goat or something like that, you know? Even more intimidating when he's 6'6, six, six, he's like shadowing over me. Um, yeah, Ed, thanks for giving me some of your time. Uh, obviously, we know how highly you think of Katie and the boxing world thinks of Katie, but even in a fight that was deemed simpler than some she's had recently, she still manages to make it look yeah. world class. Yeah. Well, and also uh, tough, because it was quite a tough fight. You know, they're 40 and 0 between them. She could fight at Carabajal. You know, people just expect her to breeze through these opponents. And, you know, I don't think it was a 10 out of 10 from Katie, but it was an 8 out of 9. And, uh, on we go, and a uh, good fight. Picking this back up with Eddie Hearn, uh, yeah, we barely got into Katie's performance um, tonight before we came to the press conference. Uh, yeah, just a quick one on kind of the tactical side of the fight with Carbajal. It might have been wide on the cards, and you know, it, it was a fight that was wide on the cards when you look at it, but um, there were some things she had to think about tonight as well. Yeah, every round was pretty competitive. You know, Carabajal was 19-0. and 0. She's tall, she's strong. I thought she punched harder than her record suggested. A little bit awkward as well, but Katie won pretty much every round, and uh, thought it was a good performance. Obviously, we know Katie has massive self-belief and you have massive self-belief and have had in her from the start, but can you really believe that six years ago she boxed in and you returned with every single lightweight title? It's such a mad roundabout yeah, story. It's amazing what's happened to her, what's happened to you know women's boxing. and you know It's great to see so many people getting on the bandwagon now, but when we were here six years ago, she was getting laughed at, really, honestly. like People were asking what the hell we were doing. I'm so glad we stuck at it. We had the perfect fighter in Katie Taylor, and you know, you'll see next year at Croke Park all the real work that's gone in, you know, forget Madison Square Garden, when you see what's about to happen in Ireland, you know, it's going to be a, a, a night that the sport will never, or the country will never forget. Yeah, I thought that was quite a poignant point when you said that in the ring, actually, about the fact that kind of Katie, all right, there were female fighters before her, but Katie was kind of the modern trailblazer, if you will. Um, yeah, I thought that was quite a poignant point. Actually. Yeah, great fighters out there now, but she's been, you know, pushing the sport so hard. So, yeah, I mean, you know, fighters out there have won Olympic gold because she basically campaign with the IOC to, to get women's boxing in the Olympics. So, um, you know, she's, she's the real trailblazer of the sport. Yeah. Um, Kiko Martinez never fails to amaze. It was all about what he's got left in the tank and we saw he's got plenty. I spoke to him after and he said, yeah, world champion for a third time. So he still wants to go. Yeah, it was an amazing performance from him, you know, the punch selection. And, uh, you know, I wonder how much the girthy fight took out of Jordan. But at the same time, you know, Kiko punches very hard. He's a world level fighter. I love the fight with Lee Wood. I love the fight with Maurizio Lara, but he's going to be in a big fight next with us. Yeah. And in terms of Jordan, I know he's had setbacks before, and it's, you know, it's been a bit of a roller coaster to hear. But um, a setback, kind of at this stage of his career, is this the biggest one of them all? Uh, not really. When you step up to world level, I mean, it was at a level that he's never boxed at before. But obviously, you know, after picking up the European title, you'd love to defend it. But you know, have a rest and, and see what's next for him. And just on Johnny, um, when I spoke to him after, he said he didn't feel the pressures like he did at Ali Pali, even though there was another thousand added on top. Um, and a fantastic win, a statement win as well, because there are other fighters who've taken longer to get to get him up. People just presume that it was, uh, you know, the guy was not a step up. He was, you know, if you know boxing and you know, you know, saw him fight Adelaide and others, it was a step up. And he's only had six fights, Johnny. You know, he's had a couple of amateur fights and he's got to deal with that crowd every time. But he's really starting to deal with it well. And I thought he boxed well. He's a real handful. You know, and it was a good win for him tonight. Um, Gary Cully with a great performance, uh, great first round knockout. He's a serious talent. Ellie Scottney becomes European champion. I think the world title will be next for her. Maisie Rose had to deal with the madness of coming out as co-main event. Great fight between Thomas Whitaker Hart and Ellison. You know, and I, I, I thought the right man won there. Just unfortunately for us, Jordan Reynolds, John Hedges, great performance and a great night of boxing. Yeah. Um, did you see Frank Warren's top five list of, of heavyweights? Yeah. It's kind of your response to, to that list. I mean, that you know, you, you don't want to put Anthony Joshua in a list, but you put Daniel Dubois in, whose best win is Trevor Bryan, really, you know. Um, or no, well, actually, Nathan Gorman. Nathan Gorman is much better than Trevor Bryan. But, you know, AJ's beaten Vladimir Klitschko, Andy Ruiz, uh, Pulev, um, Joseph Parker, Alexander Povetkin, Carlos Takan, Dillian Wyatt. But he's not in the top five. I mean, you know, the reality is, is 
Joe Joyce's best win is Daniel Dubois. I actually Josie Parker, you know, but his resume is already much better than, than um, Daniel Dubois. But look, obviously, shock promoter puts all his fighters in the top five. I'd do the same thing, so it's fine. Just one more thing, obviously, we roll on to Abu Dhabi, going to be a great fight at the top of the bill next week. But just in terms of the Connor situation, I know it must have seemed like it's just dragging and dragging with questions, but do you think kind of next week things might lay off or will there be kind of things still coming out? So, you know, can we expect news next week, I suppose? Nothing to come out. And what's next is we've got to get this hearing up and running with the courts or whoever's going to, going to um, hear the case because he's got to go through that, that, um, that system. He's got to go through that... Uh, that moment where ultimately his case is heard. You know, whether he's found innocent, whether he's banned, let's get it going and, and sort of find a way to find out when he could possibly fight again. What a fight in Abu Dhabi, by the way, at the top of the film between Bivar and Ramirez. Bivar Ramirez, incredible fight. The whole card, unbelievable. Cameron McCaskill, uh, brilliant fight. Uh, Zelfa Barrett going for the world title against Rakimov. Galalia fire, Kalia fire. Special night in Abu Dhabi coming next week. I'm going to share something with you that might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.